Right. So I'm I'm now going to move on to describing our model. And I'd like to start by describing how a standard consistency model works before describing our proposed model that makes allowance for inconsistency. So here I've shown a simple network that includes two arm trials comparing each pair of treatments amongst A, B and C, together with a three arm trial comparing all of A, B and C. If we fit a consistency model to these data, we assume that the underlying treatment difference between A and B is the same in the two arm AB trial as it is in the three arm ABC trial. And we make similar assumptions for the other two pairwise comparisons. So this is where we're, we're assuming that direct and indirect evidence agree for every comparison. And as I mentioned before, this might not be true if, for example, the patients in the AB trial are systematically different from those in the ABC trial, perhaps because they weren't eligible to receive treatment C. In our proposed model, we're adding an inconsistency term to the ABC loop to allow each of the underlying treatment contrasts to differ between the two-arm and three-arm trials. This model handles the treatment symmetrically by adding an equal amount of inconsistency to each contrast in the loop. Previous inconsistency models handle treatments asymmetrically, for example, by adding the inconsistency term to only one of the contrasts in the loop and not allowing the two arm and three arm trials to differ for the other contrasts. So our inconsistency terms here add up to omega around the loop. And if we reverse the sign of the inconsistency terms, that would result in the same model. When there are multiple loops in a network, we want to extend the model to a global model, which includes one inconsistency term for each independent loop. And as I mentioned earlier, if the network only includes pairwise trials, then the number of independent loops is fixed and we can calculate it using this formula that I showed earlier. But if the network also includes multi-arm trials covering comparisons that aren't evaluated in any pairwise trials, then counting the number of loops becomes more complicated. So to demonstrate this in an example, I've assumed that we have a pairwise trial comparing treatments A and B and a three-arm trial comparing A, B and C. So in this, on this slide, the red and orange figure on the left illustrates the trial data, and the blue figures show two different ways of fitting a network meta-analysis model. When we fit the model, we can choose which two contrasts to fit to the ABC trial data. The third contrast for that trial can be derived from the other two, because a multi-arm trial has to be consistent within itself. If we choose to use the AB and BC contrasts and fit model one, then you can see that no loops are created in the model. But if we use the AC and BC contrasts and fit model two, then the model will include one loop. I'm now going to show you a second example of another network where the number of loops depends on the parameterization because there are multi-arm trials. Here I've assumed that we have three different three-arm trials, one comparing A, B and C, one comparing A, C and D, and one comparing C, D and E. And I have to admit that this is quite a strange example which we probably wouldn't expect to see in practice with there being no pairwise trials at all. Um, comparing those treatments. So the figure on the um, top left shows the trial data and the two blue figures show two different ways of fitting a network meta-analysis model. As in the previous example, we're choosing which two contrasts are fitted to the trial data for each of the three arm trials. And the choices we make will produce different numbers of loops. In model one, we are parameterizing the trial so that we maximize the overlap between the parameters fitted in each trial design. And this parameterization creates no loops in the model. 
On the other hand, in model two, we have minimal overlap of parameters between trial designs, and this produces two loops in the model. Both of these examples show that if multi-arm trials are included in the network, different model parameterizations may produce different numbers of loops, and we have to make a decision about how many loops to include. So um, to think more about this, I'd like to ask you a question again and run another poll shortly. So if you were to fit a model to this example um, or the example before, and you could make a choice about whether to minimize the number of loops in the model or maximize the number of loops in the model, I'd like to ask which of those you'd prefer, minimizing or maximizing. Thank you. Okay, so 62% of people have chosen minimize and 38% have chosen maximize. And for this question, there isn't a, a right or wrong answer. Um, it's a matter of opinion. And both ways are valid approaches to fitting the model, but people have made different choices. And this is a point where we've made a different choice from previous authors. So previous authors um, have chosen to maximize the number of loops in the model. And that means also maximizing the number of inconsistency parameters. We've decided that we prefer to choose a model that minimizes the total number of loops. Minimizing the number of inconsistency parameters in the model means that variation among trials is modeled as between trial heterogeneity as far as possible and only modeled as inconsistency where necessary. So if I go back to our example, the second example. So in the second example, model one needs um, a heterogeneity parameter to model the variation between trials on the AC contrast and the D versus C contrast because both of those contrasts are informed by more than one trial but it doesn't need any inconsistency parameters because there are no loops in, on the, in the model, sorry, in the network. On the other hand, um, in model two, we need two inconsistency parameters because we've parameterized the trials in such a way that we've created two loops, but we don't need any heterogeneity parameters because all of the contrasts are informed only by one trial. So we don't have to model between trial heterogeneity. Um, so yes, we've decided that we would prefer to model the variation as heterogeneity as far as possible. Because between trial heterogeneity is usually assumed to be equal across all the different comparisons in the network, minimizing the number of loops will produce a model that includes fewer parameters in total and we think this could make interpretation easier. Identifying a model parameterization that minimizes the number of loops could be done by hand in very simple examples like the ones I just showed you, but it very quickly becomes complicated as the number of treatments increases. So our algorithm, um, as well as identifying the loops, it also finds a suitable model that will minimize the number of loops in the model.